all right. Won't you come with me, my Phyllis dear, by yon blue mountain stream, where the flowers smell the sweetest? What's the use? You can't pull over. We should have stayed on the blacktop. We're heading the right direction. No, that's what you said at the cemetery. Don't worry, I was raised on backcountry roads. In Texas, where you can see a hundred miles. Take it easy. You don't go by horses like that. Afternoon. Can we get to Brattleboro on this road? Yep. Thanks. I wouldn't recommend it. Why not? Bridge is out over Baker Brook. Uh, of course, you could go up over Putney Mountain to Route 5, but that's 10 miles out of your way. And the Sunset Lake Road is pretty hard on low-slung cars, mostly ledges. In fact, if I was going to Battleboro, I wouldn't start from here. Well, what do you suggest? Well, you can follow me, and I'll show you the turn to the Wardsboro Road. Uh, how far? Oh, two, three miles. Thanks, we'll find it. Nice team you have. Yeah. Yeah, not much for speed, though. No. On the other hand, they don't get lost much. They can find their way back to the barn. <laughs> in Massachusetts. It's cheaper there. It is. But we're not in Massachusetts. We're in Vermont, driving in ever-decreasing concentric circles until we've finally driven up our own exhaust pipe. Well, let's push her out of the mud. Push it out of here. Let's go get some gas. Frog? Yep. You get to Brattleboro? No. Missed the Wadsboro Road, eh? Among others. We ran out of gas. Well, you picked the night part. We thought maybe you could sell us a couple of gallons. Don't have any gasoline. Or we could siphon a little out of your car and we'd pay you for it. I haven't got any car. Well, if we could use the phone, we could... No. I used to have one before my wife passed away. And then after, folks I didn't particularly care for started calling me up, so I had it took out. See, the car is stuck about a quarter of a mile down the road. Now, we can't push it out of the mud. Yeah. I come by there once. I see a fella standing up to his neck in mud. I says, Mr... You ought to know enough not to walk up a Vermont road in mud time. I do, he says. I'm standing on the top of my truck. <laughs> Did 
Do you think you could pull us out with your horses? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay, good. I wouldn't rush off, though. Why not? Well, your automobile can set out there all night. Nothing's going to happen to it, except it'll get wet. I take my team out on a night like this. They're going to get all head up and then maybe chilled, and I'm going to have them down with a cough or a bronchial infection or something. You mean he's delicate? I'll get you out in the morning. We can't wait till morning. I don't see you've got any choice. Look, where's the nearest phone? A mile down the road, Leventhal. But there's summer people, they don't get here till the weekend. You been around horses? Mules. My granddaddy had a team of mules down in Texas. Oh. I tell you what, there's the spare bedroom. I closed it up after my wife passed on, you know, to save on heating. Wasn't well, there anything you can do for us tonight? Well, sure. I can put you up until morning. Then you can tow the car up here and go to town and get some gasoline. Well, we wouldn't want to put you out. Uh, you don't run across young fellas who know anything about horses these days. Tractors, that's all they know. I don't suppose you vet. Well, now I got a little piece of ham left. Corn cob smoked. Arthur Perham. Link case. Hi. Hot styles. There comes the power. Well, that makes things a little brighter. All right. Particular job in mind down to Springfield? Go pick something up at the fairgrounds. You get around a lot, eh? Yep. Trouble holding the job? No, we just like to keep moving. Looking for something? Yep. Think you'll find it in Springfield? Maybe. Figure you'll stay long enough in one place to know it when you find it? Matter of fact, as long as you don't know where it is or what, you might find it here. I could use a couple of men to help out in a few weeks. You mean work for you? Help out on the place. Well, we're working our way down to New York. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. It's hard work loading a stone boat or using a crosscut saw. Might be too much for you boys. I guess I can make out for myself. I've been making out a long time now. 69 years. You ain't sure we're finding something in Springfield? No. Fane's a shire town. That's the courthouse over there. I got some business over at the Grange Hall. Get your gasoline at the soil. Granddaddy raised himself a crop of cotton when he was 72 years old with a team of mules. Did I ever tell you that? 
No, but I've noticed there are occasions when your speech sounds more and more West Texas and your grammar deteriorates. We're working our way down to New York, remember? Leaves are starting to color. Well, the signs of autumn that I have my heart set on are the crisp tapping of women's heels on the sidewalks at 57th Street and 5th Avenue. The girls sailing down Park Avenue with everything clued down tight, ship-shaped and Bristol fashion, like a racing sloop. We uh, don't know that there's a job down in Springfield, do we? You gotta face up to it. You can't go through another winter up there. You've been saying that for five years. And you're a stubborn man, Arthur. You know this hasn't got anything to do with the bank. I'm just here as a friend. I appreciate that, Dunn. Your note's only for 2700 and the place is worth 7000 easy. Fact is, if you sold up, you'd have enough to keep you in the congregational home in Jamaica. It would be different if Ada was alive. You could look after each other. It's the winter. We got all the school bus routes to plow out. It's uh, three miles up to your place for one house. It's an expense to the town. There's been a permanent paying taxes on my farm since 1799. I know, I know. I just thought you'd look on the financial side of things. Arthur, you've got to be where somebody can take care of you in case something happens. Anyway, I got my team to look after. Arthur, you're going around in circles with those horses. Hire out spring and fall and summer just to raise enough money to keep them over the winter. They're good horses. Now, Arthur, let me put it this way. You think a lot of those horses. Yeah. Arthur, your barn's at least 100 feet from the house. You going to be able to shovel a path through this winter to feed them and water them? How about last winter? You fell down and pulled your back. You crawled out to the barn on your hands and knees for a week before John Thomas come by with a plow and found you. Suppose you was to fall again. Well, winter's never easy. Arthur, I hope you'll take this in good part, because it's done out of friendship. We're going to call in your note. I can't raise the 2700 Not and keep my team over the winter. Well, all right then. I suppose I got to sell out. It's best. Practical. Only common sense. Yeah. I suppose it is. I got about two weeks' work promised. That's fine, Arthur. That's fine. You'll have a fine time up at Townsend. Harold Billings is up there, too, isn't he? No, not anymore. He died this summer. <laughs> Them's good horses. Pulled 10,000 pounds in the time. Tractor on the granddaddy's place. Plowed right through the dooryard and busted off a corner of his house. Now he came into town walking behind his mules right down Chestnut Street and stopped in front of our house. 
He didn't have any other place to go. Got $100 a piece for him. Spent it all on liquor. Noses are soft. Like rose petals. Are you with Mr. Perm? In a manner of speaking. Would you mind giving him a message for me? Tell him we're expecting him tomorrow for the war. All right. Uh, who's we? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Claire Leventhal. My father's Dr. Leventhal. You're summer people. Yes. Mr. Perm was going to do some work for us. You mean help out around the place? Will you tell Mr. Pearl? Sure. Miss Leventhal, do you ever walk on 57th Street and 5th Avenue? Yes, yes, I do. up your mind? He wants an answer. 38 a week and board. What are you doing, reverting to some sort of ancestral type? Look at you, you're squatting in a field, feeling the good earth. We're working our way down to New York, remember? Noon. Be over tomorrow, Mr. Pearl? Yep. Eight o'clock too early? Fine. See you then. You fellas make up your mind? I guess we could, uh, help out on the place a while. I wouldn't put that in my mouth if I were you. How many tons have we hauled up here? Why, there's maybe a ton on the stone boat. They hauled five times that much at the horse drawing two years ago. Where's, 
it would be cheaper to hire a bulldozer, but we've always had Mr. Perham. And he mows the field I sit here for hours and watch the horses go back and forth against the sky. It's very peaceful. Is that what you want? Peace? At the moment, very much. And you find Mr. Perham and his horses uh, quaint? Mr. Perham belongs somewhere. Even if it's on a hillside with a team of horses. I don't really. Not in New York and not here. Do you? I don't know. Sometimes I think so. I remember riding across the Mojave once and I saw a place up ahead. Beautiful. Hills and trees and a lake. I said to myself, this is the place to stay. To find out who you are. To find peace. Of course, when I got there, it was just more desert. Maybe it's because we never got through the winter. Dad says someday he's going to write a paper for the sociology journal. The Vermont winter. A socio-psychological casual factor in personality formation. What's this? Up in the corner. At the time and place mentioned above, I will sell the following personal property, being the entire household effects of Arthur H. Perham. In part one brass bed, rocking and other chairs, glass cabinet. It's all there, everything in the house. Look down at the bottom. Hay rake, cutter bar, harness, tools, two heavy-duty wagons with rubber tires, and a team of fine pulling horses. He's selling out. Where is he? the auction. Now, a few people in back of me here would like to get your seats. We'll be ready to roll. <clears throat> you can see a lot better if you get right out in front of me, folks, and I like it quiet behind me. Now, we do have many fine items here this morning. Before I say much more, though, I'd like to tell you uh, some of you people look kind of hungry out here. Uh, we have some very nice refreshments in the back, hot coffee, donuts, sandwiches, Served by the East Dover Ladies' Aid Society. I'm sure you'll get some good eats. Now, I'd like to say this, that the terms of the sale are cash. Although you may carry a charge account if you wish and settle up at the end of the sale. If I sell you some china and glass, and if I sell it to you as being perfect, and you find within five minutes that it is not perfect, we'll give you back your money. Otherwise, all sales will be final. Now. The first item we have is this very fine punch bowl on a standard. And would you hold it right up there, Roger? I think it's all in good condition. Well, wait just a second. I see a tiny chip here. All right, would anybody start it along at a $10 bid? Can I get a $10 bid to start it? Anybody start it? We'll start it at $5 then, at a $5 bid. I've got a $2 bid over here. Do you want to put $3 now? Going for two and three. The bid three to go, three to bid three. I have to give four. Four to honor four. I have to give four and a half. Four and a half, I get you out of it $5. Now, Roger. Take that right over and give it to the lady. And Bernard, right here is a beautiful clock. Coming up, black walnut, I believe. Does it run? Does it run? Well, I don't know. Mr. Perham, does the clock run? 
The perm says that it does run. And can I get a $10 bid for it? Anybody start off at a $10 bid? Well, how about $6? Anybody give six for it? Eh, what will you bid for it? How many dollars? Let's go on it, folks. How many dollars for it? How many dollars for it? Do I hear a bid? I get $2 over there. Three, do you want to put $3 now? Now, our next item is a very fine picture frame. Gold leaf, I believe. And a beautiful lady in the picture. I wonder who that lady is. Mr. Perham, could you tell us who this lady is? My grandmother. Mr. Perham says that it is his grandmother, a very handsome lady and also a nice frame. And starting right along, would anybody give, well, how many dollars would he give? I'll let you start it where you wish. Now here's the item, folks, that a lot of you men have been waiting for. Now you men have had all day to look these horses over, and there isn't too much that I can tell you about them. But they are a fine pair, weighed about 3,500 pounds. This near horse has a lot of Belgian in them, and they can pull. Mr. Perham uses these horses in sugaring in the woods and drawing a stone boat. Last month over in Bennington, I sold a team of horses that weighed 4,000 pounds. They sold for a dollar a pound, and by golly, they're not half the team of horses of Mr. Perham's. Now, can I get a $3,000 bid to start it? Anybody give a $3,000 bid to start these horses? You'll go a long way to find a team of horses as good as these. Anybody give $2,500? Start them at $2,500? Well, how many dollars will you start them at? How many dollars? $500. i have got a $500 bid, you out of a $750. Five, you out of a $750. I got a $500 bid, you out of a seven and a half. Five of the bid, seven and a half, seven and a half, you out of a seven and a half. And now, $1,000, you out of a $1,000. Going for $1,000, anybody, $1,250 now. Twelve, twelve and a half, I got $1,500, $1,500, $1,500, you out of a $1,500. Oh, I never I should have come. $1, he was so proud of them. He never really worked them except for the horse drawing. $1,750, is that high or low? I don't know. A good registered Morgan goes for about mm, $1,200. I don't know about uh, draft horses. Bid, 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 $1,900. I got now $2,000. Even money, $2,000. It, two th I got $2,000. You ought to put $2,100. $2,100. $2,100. And now two. Bid two to go to the bid two. $2,200. I got a $2,100 bid. Am I right? You ought to put $2,200. $2,100. Bid two to go to the bid two. Going for $2,100. You ought to put $2,200. I have. Who will give $23, sir? $23, yes. He says $2,300. $2,300. Bid $23 to bid four. To go four to bid four. Going for $2,300. Anybody at $2,400. Hit $23 to bid four. Going at $23. Anybody four now? At $2,400. $24. What are you doing? Quiet. Hit $24. I have. To give five. Do you want him at $25? What are you, you doing? Shilling? Trying to Do run the price up? Now? No. $2,600. Going for $2,500 and $2,600. Do you want him at $2,600? $2,600 do I have? Would you make it $2,700, sir? At $2,700. I have $2,600. Do you want him at seven? dollars Well, would you give $2,600 and a half? $2,600 and a half, by God. Now $2,700. Going for $2,650. Anybody at $2,700? I'm going to sell him. Oh, bid, mister. Anybody, $2,700? I've sold him to you, sir, for $2,650. A team of horses. You bought a team of horses. No, I bought them for Mr. Perham. He asked me to after they started. He put them up for auction. Yeah, and he bought them back himself. He doesn't even have a wagon left. Couldn't you talk him out of it? I didn't try. Well, you think I'm a button short. I, I said to myself, Arthur, it's got to be done. And so I just sat there while they knocked down Ada's harmonium that she sets its store by, and the best dishes, and the mantel clock, and the Wyndham County Gazette from 1879, and my grandmother's picture, and the brass bed. And then George Cosseth, he brought in the team. And I kept thinking how I was planning to enter him in the horse pulling contest up at the new Fane Field Day next week. 
And I looked at him, standing there, and I said to myself, Arthur, that's a fine team. And so I bought him. I kept thinking, we've kept each other through the winters, five years since Miss Perman went. supposed to be in New York, weren't you? Mm-hmm. So am I. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be getting married. I'm not a very romantic person. When I think of marriage, it's, it's not rosy or exciting or comfortable. I think of two complex people with their own neuroses rubbing each other raw. I'd like Two porcupines trying to make love. Let me ask you one thing. Just one thing. What did you want from me? I'm sorry. I don't know, really. I guess I just wanted to make the summer last. It's like closing your eyes when you see the trees start to turn. You going back? to the field day. Thank you. I think this year I'll be glad when winter comes. Sleep in the house. On the floor. You ever been in Drywell, Texas? What? I remember my granddaddy coming down Chestnut Street after he sold his mules. Dead, staggering drunk. An old man, 72 years old. And he was cussing the dust and the drought and the bank and the cotton price support program, hollering at the top of his lungs. And then he fell into the geraniums. And my pa went out to get him. He had his head in pa's lap. He was crying. Tough, wind-dried old dirt farmer crying. He kept saying, if I could get one more crop. I had it in mind to get one more crop. I got sick. <sighs> Todd, you ever been to a horse-drawn contest? No. Maybe you? No.
folks. We're all ready for the fair. Come on over to the ring now. Over this way. Get the horses ready. Get them lined up there. Line them up. For you folks who've never been to a horse drawing, the team has to pull the sled six feet. They get three chances to add up to six feet, or they're out of the contest. The team that pulls the most weight clean wins. Lift to 600 pounds on the boat. First is Ed Crowell's team from Hartland, Vermont. Hank McGrathlin doing the driving. is Arthur Perrin's team from New Fame. 5,600 pounds on the boat. pounds on the sled. Three teams now eliminated. And here's Robert Crane's team of Surrey, New Hampshire. Edwards doing the driving. left now out of 12 starters. And you get a record load on of 9,400 on the boat. Where's Cook doing the driving? Try it this way. Oh, Get up next year's fair. Still 10,400 on the boat. Last try of Donald Stark, West Brattleboro, Vermont. from new fame. 10,400 on the sled. Distance, 22 inches. All right, bring them around for the 
third try, Isaac. Last try, yeah. Me. I'm no farm boy. We're out. We lost it for him. can't have gone far. He's walking behind the horses. It was his last chance, and we beat him. I'm sorry. I, I missed the hook. What can I do? talk to you. Yeah? Mr. Perm, it isn't your last chance. You can try again next year. Hmm. You can even keep the team through the winter if you have somebody to help you out. You don't have to let it beat you. Look, I'm gonna stay up here. It'll be a job, see, through the winter. Now, you've got enough cash to pay off the note, and I can work somewhere. Oh, well, wait a minute, Link. Well, why not? You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm asking for the job, for the winter. You bothered because we got beat in the hush pulling? You're not beat. Well, sure I was. But it was only hush pulling. We done pretty fair for an old man, and two fellas never done it before. Come in second. You shouldn't take it so hard. Don't mean nothing to you, really. It would have been nice to win, sure. But the fact is, I was a darn fool bidding for these horses at that auction. I can't keep them over the winter. I know that now. I got my common sense back. What are you going to do with them? Sell them to Floyd Granger, the fellow who was bidding against me. 
That's where I'm going now. <laughs> Take a $200 loss for my foolishness. But it was worth it. You all right? Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. You two fellas, you run ahead of the frost line. You ain't found out yet, but most folks know that it's going to get colder and it's going to get worse. And you just do the best you can. That's the thing about farming in Vermont. You break your back just trying to keep even with what's real. You got no time to spare fighting your fancy. You get so as you know enough to call a stone a stone and pry it out of your field and load it on a stone boat and haul it away. But you don't make the mistake of trying to haul away a granite outcrop that's part and parcel of the mountain. Now, what are you going to do? What has to be done? What's common sense? Caleb, come on, Joy. Come on. Screen Gems presentation. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.